I'm Dr. Alice Gorman and I'm a woman in space. I'm a space archaeologist. I work at Flinders University in Adelaide and I look at the archaeology and cultural heritage value of all of the objects humans have put into space. All of the space junk in Earth orbit, the planetary landing sites that we have on the moon and numerous other bodies in the solar system. And I also look at how humans live in space. So this is archaeology of the now and into the future. The future of space is especially exciting in Australia. A lot of people don't realise that we've been in this game for a long time. Australia was one of the first nations to host a rocket launch range in the late 1940s that was capable of sending a rocket into space. But what we see happening now is a whole raft of new technologies, innovative researchers, Australians getting engaged in building their own missions and collaborating with a multitude of people overseas. So we've kind of got a renaissance of Australian space at the moment. And, and the heart of it, I believe, is right here in South Australia. Because we've been doing space for a long time in this state. And it's just incredibly exciting to see the ideas and the technologies that are coming out of all the people working in space here. So I think we're going to be out among the stars very soon. What excites me about space is that we have a whole solar system out there that we know so little about. And as all of these new missions go forward, including some that Australia is heavily involved with, we're going to find out so much more about the context that our planet exists in and about how we should live our life on Earth. And who knows, maybe even we're going to find some little microbes that are alive on Mars or Venus and realise that we're not alone anymore. My specialty in space is archaeology. A lot of people think that sounds a little bit strange, but humans have been putting stuff into space since 1957, so we have an incredible archaeological record out there. And most importantly, it actually has cultural heritage significance. All of these faraway spacecraft and planetary landing sites are linked to people on Earth who worked on them or watched them or were involved in them in some way. And this, this means there are all kinds of communities on Earth who are connected to space through these places and missions and objects. So that's what I work on. When I was young, I wanted to be an archaeologist, but I also wanted to be an astronomer. And the idea of space archaeology didn't exist. So this was something I came to, I, I basically had a radical career change. I was a regular archaeologist working on Indigenous heritage in Australia. And one day I just had a revelation that space could be archaeology as well. So I completely changed my career direction and put those two things together. And now I, I'm actually one of only maybe 10 people in the world who are specialists in space archaeology and heritage. Australian space industry currently only has about 20% of women in it. And this is something that we want to change. We want there to be more women. Across the world, it's roughly 25% of women who are in parliaments and involved in government. So this means that people who are making the decisions about our future in space are not representing the views of all of humanity. So we need more girls and women out there skilled up, knowledgeable and engaged in those decision-making processes. But you don't have to be a physicist or an engineer to get involved in space. We need everybody. We need people involved in health, in social sciences, in the arts, in all of the things that make up a, a full, living, healthy community. And we need all of these people to feel they have a role in deciding our future in space. My current project is an archaeological study of the International Space Station. It's our oldest, largest, most complex space habitat in Earth orbit, and quite likely it's going to be deorbited by the end of the decade. So we have a unique opportunity to learn how humans adapt to this very unique microgravity environment. We're looking at how crew use the internal spaces, how they adapt objects to different uses to try and make their life in microgravity a bit smoother. And we're hoping to draw lessons from this, which will actually help people design better space habitats in the future.